what is going on collective uh welcome back to my channel it's your boy adam raw like comment share subscribe and uh please overlook these ashy ass hands as a matter of fact you ain't gotta look overlook them today i uh made me some i made some special like uh bomb i want to call it bomb Really, it's a beer bomb, I mean, right? Um, but today, it's gonna be some anti ashy cream. <laughs> Look at that moisturize. <laughs> yeah. All right. Damn, that smells so fucking good. I like that scent. I like that scent. Oh, I like that sound. Anyway, um, yeah, um, your boy Adam Rowe, welcome back to welcome back to the channel. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Oh man, the other day I wanted to talk about um it was I, I was dating this girl who uh who dad had adopted, like, you know, was like adopt kids and stuff like that, right? And at one point, me and her, we talked about, like, the adoption process and all that. Somehow it came up, you know, because she, me and her, we talked about every fucking thing. I mean, everything, right? So, one day she was talking about how bad the adoption kids was. And I'm like, what you mean? Like, they can't be that bad. And she was like, yeah, they are, you know. And then she got to breaking it down. Like, you know, some of those kids, they, like come from homes where they were like sexually abused or uh abused sexually abused uh neglected and stuff like that and when they come and they like if you got kids and you end up adopting or even fostering and you bring those kids into your home uh sometimes those kids uh take those habits and you know teach your kids those habits you know stuff that they learn so you know you get kids who like you know say for instance like sexual abuse kids they end up you know showing your kids and stuff uh stuff that they shouldn't be showing them you know and doing stuff with those kids that they shouldn't be doing so yeah i was i meant to talk about that the other day that was the last video i did because um i don't know why it crossed my mind but mainly it crossed my mind because uh i guess um it was something about like remember i remember i told you i kept having them dreams about somebody having sex with their cousin and all of that and stuff like that right like this is the vibe like maybe it's like an adopted or a foster kid or something like that or it's like a, it could be a stepchild don't get me wrong it definitely could be like stepkids and shit like that but i also was getting a vibe that somebody out here was like pimping adopted kids you know what i'm saying like pimping adopted kids now if this isn't you just take what resonate leave what don't all right leave what don't resonate with you right but basically the vibe that i got was that it was somebody who ended up with like um some uh you know some uh foster kids adopted kids whatever they're taking care of these kids but come to find out the kids was like i don't want to call them promiscuous but they were like sexually abused and with them being sexually abused children it's like they were out in the like you know like out in the um neighborhood and stuff like that um you know just doing their thing you know what i'm saying like sleeping with older men uh boy you know boys that's coming through there like pretty much everybody in that area was pretty much having sex with someone you know those adopted kids and you know i'm not saying this to uh tarnish anybody's name like that but this is this is just the vibe that i was getting and i meant to talk about it the other day but then i was um listening to this reading today and lo and behold it came it popped right the fuck up you know what i'm saying it popped right the fuck up i don't know what's been going on lately but 
Yeah. That shit popped. It popped right the fuck back up, you know? And I'm just like, what the fuck? I was like, you know what? That's what I forgot to talk about that day. So, yeah. If you do have kids in the system or if you know some kids in the system, definitely check up on them. Make sure that they okay. Uh, family or not, no matter how quote unquote bad they are, still make sure that, you know, um, they're being taken care of and being cared for properly because we all heard the stories about how these children endured a, a, a harsh, not all of them. Some of them, you know, are good kids, you know, come from good backgrounds that just get caught up in the system. You know what I'm saying? In the wrong, in the wrong manner. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's a circumstance where, um, maybe an incident happens and you get somebody who have do their job down at the state building and they end up taking somebody's kids who don't deserve it. You know, I'm just going to be real. It happens like that. And it's, it's a hell of a, it's an uphill battle sometimes to get them back. And sometimes what they do is they place these kids with, you know, um, adults. Well, I don't, I can't really say adults, but I'll just say, you know, for the sake of definition, these adults who treat them worse than what their parents was treating them. You know what I'm saying? So it's a double-edged sword. It's not all, all that. But yeah, this was something that I was thinking about the other day. I'm like, damn, is somebody out here pimping adopted kids? Because let's be real, you know, adopted kids, you nobody really look for them kids. And they already feel like they, they don't have anybody to like turn to. And even if they did have somebody to turn to, they wouldn't know how to act when it comes to getting that kind of attention. There's some kids out here who like, when they're caught up in a system and they're abused by all these adults over and over again, or just people in general, you know, they come to develop a different way than, you know, what we consider healthy or normal. But at the end of the day, it's still a need that is that that has to be met. Like these, there's the child still needs um, love, affection, attention. Attention is a really big thing. You know what I'm saying? Generally, if you can, you know, if a child is pretty much like uh, doing all this weird stuff to try to get your attention, nine times out of ten, they they love the shit out of you. You know what I'm saying? Kids don't try to get the attention of people they don't like or people that they're afraid of or terrified of. They don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what that is. I don't, you know, so I'm just, I don't know. I just wanted to mention it at least and see what comes up in the cards today. Um, my drawer, I had a drawer in here and I pulled too hard on it the other, uh, yesterday. And yeah, I gotta uh, I gotta fix that because um, I think I dislocated the handle from the uh, what's the name? So guess what? My dice are gone. Yeah, I don't have my dice, unfortunately. Oh. So I'm gonna have to use the cards in terms of placements and things of that nature. Okay. So let's see what comes out here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go do it the old school way. And we're gonna see what's coming up here. Well, it's my old school way. This is how I was running my cards before I had uh, shifted them to something different. All right. All right, so we got the Ace of Pentacles out here. So yes, there's some big money out here. The vibe that I'm getting is that there's an awesome opportunity coming your way. There's an awesome opportunity out here. There's a blessing out here for somebody. And it has that person's name on it. You know what I'm saying? It has that person's name on it. I don't know if this is going to come out of the blue or out of the... I don't, you know what I mean? Well, the vibe I get is that it's going to come out of the blue. It's not going to be something that you know, you can really prepare for, I guess. But let's see what else we got going on with this. We got the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. 
And we got the King of Pentacles in reverse here. So there's an opportunity out here. But it looks like somebody's trying to take it away. For, it's like a King of Pentacles in reverse is trying to keep this from coming in. Or they're trying to, someone's trying to slow you down to keep you from making the right moves or something like that is the vibe that I'm getting. With the King of Pentacles out here in reverse and the uh, Knight of Pentacles out here. So, um, there could be two people out here working against you. But essentially what this has to do with, and you know, it's not always a person. Sometimes it's just like having poor spending habits or us abusing our uh, power or abusing, um, spending our money on things that really don't serve us, right? And because we are arrogant in the way that we are spent, that we spend our money sometimes, it can block blessings for us in our life. That's just like if you wanted, you know, you know, um, if you are like taking care of your responsibilities and you're paying and you're saving and you're saving and you're saving, eventually as you save it, start opening up the doorway for other things to come into your life, right? But if you're spending and you're balling out and you're doing all this other extra stuff that you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be doing, then essentially what happens is it creates more bills for you to pay. It creates, you know what I'm saying? Because on top of your frivolously, you know, frivolity, you have to, um, on top of the your uh, frivolous spending, you have responsibilities to take care of. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, essentially what happens is we get frustrated. So when we get frustrated, it's hard for us to make the right decisions sometimes. So uh, if you are out here doing reckless spending and things of that nature, you're being asked to kind of chill out on that. And I'm guilty of that because I just bought something that I've been having my eye on for a long time, right? But um, try your best not to abuse the power that you have or abuse your wisdom. Because remember I told you that the pinnacles has to do with uh, wisdom for me because wisdom is what leads to money in my opinion, right? What you know is how you get paid. The things you know is, or the things that you excel at in terms of wisdom is generally equates to, you know, your worth and how much you get paid or, you know what I'm saying? In, mo in some cases, not every single case, you know what I'm saying? But essentially, like, say if you're in a professional field or whatever, what you know about that field, it dictates how much you get paid. So that's the correlation I have between wisdom and, you know, finances. However, the vibe that I'm getting here is that there could be with the King of Pentacles here. This is somebody who generally is uh, they could abuse their money. But I'm thinking somebody is abusing their gift is the vibe that I if I had to wish if I had to had if I had to say anything, I would say this person is abusing their gifts or they're abusing their wisdom. Okay, they're you. They have wisdom that they use in the wrong way. Okay, like like I was talking about the spending and things of that nature. Like you know you should have, you know, but you choose not to, and whatever, right? Essentially, the energy here is kind of like what this knight of this king of pentacles here in reverse. It just kind of give me the vibe of, uh, well, the King of Pentacles and the, I mean, yeah, the King of Pentacles and the Upright has to do with somebody who is like um, a jack of all trades. Now, imagine somebody who's the jack of all trades abusing that power or his wisdom in order to try to get over on someone who don't deserve it. You know what I'm saying? When you do those kind of things, what happens is you start losing gifts. You start losing position and things of that nature. So, yes, there is an opportunity out here, but it requires you not to abuse your position and or your authority over others. This is essentially what the vibe I'm getting here. Yeah, you got the Page of Cups in the, in the, up in the um, reverse here in the new slot. That has to do with immaturity. That has to do with giving in to your emotions, okay? So, essentially, the vibe that I'm getting here is that the new path here, it, you know, you, you could be petty at this time. You know what I'm saying? You could be petty about something if you choose to because you got every right to be petty about something right here, you know? But I'm getting the vibe that 
the time you spend being petty about something is going to be time that you can use to fix or, you know, change some stuff around. You got the Nine of Wands out here, right? With the Nine of Wands in Harmony, in the Harmony slot here, this give me the vibe of, um, although you have pretty much the green light to be petty, essentially, um, I can see somebody coming, like, doing things from a hurt place is what I'm seeing here. Or this give me the energy of, I mean, the vibe of Chiron, okay? Chiron is the wounded healer, essentially, right? Now, imagine if you would having a wound that you cannot heal, but you can heal everybody else's wound. You see what I'm saying? So, essentially, the energy or the vibe that I'm getting here is that, like, maybe you can... You understand, you know, the things that other people are going through or whatever it may be, or you might even put yourself in other people's shoes, but you're struggling to fix or fix what's going wrong in your life. And you have some immature petty energy here. So somebody here could be like, I don't know if it's you or someone else, but the vibe that I'm getting here is that somebody could be like indulging in like some kind of petty energy and they are you know coming from like this wounded place or this hurt place is the vibe that i get here basically a hurt dog a holler right so whoever this person is whether it's you or someone else the vibe that i get is that somebody here is like really guarded and they are pretty much they are hurt like maybe their inner child is wounded or something like that like a wounded inner child and because of that, they're coming from a hurt space. And they're, uh, you know what I'm saying, being really petty with other people and stuff like that. So let's see what else we got here. We got the Nine of Pentacles here, yeah. So essentially what happens is with this petty energy here, the space required for you to be independent is, you know what I'm saying, that energy of that independence, that Nine of Pentacles right there, like I was talking about, that has to do with uh, independent energy, right? Living on your own and things of that nature. So all that energy that you spend being petty is actually removing coins from you and it's lowering your, uh, your status, your money, your finances or whatever it may be. This, I don't wanna say like, oh, it's spell work or whatever it may be, but somebody here, the vibe I get is like harness, harvesting your energy someone is blatantly trying to like get you to be petty with them or to come from a hurt space from you for you know come from a hurt space so that you essentially sacrifice your nine of pentacles for their um you know for their basically for them you know what i'm saying and out here you're being urged you know to kind of you know like if you keep coming from this petty energy or whatever you know, essentially, you just need to let it go. And it may not always be you because I've been in spiritual warfare where it was like, it's not me who need to let it go. It's the other person who need to let it go. You know what I'm saying? And you can't make them let it go. You can't force them to make, you know, let it go. Some people are holding on to it just for the hell of holding on to it because they know that you want it, you know, that it's best for you if you know they let it if they let it go too you know and they will prefer to watch you come down to their level this is somebody who really wants to see you so broken and whatever that this essentially this is a kamikaze attack this person is losing whoever this is if the, if you are involved with somebody or if the, you do have an enemy out here your enemy is losing things out here because of what they did. They abused their uh, resources towards you. You know what I'm saying? They abused your resources, their resources. When they abused their resources towards you, essentially what happened was they started losing things little by little, right? When you first started the spiritual warfare, you were being attacked in spaces you never even thought of being attacked. And it probably had you in places where you never thought you would be. And then one day, all of a sudden, guess what? It started lightening up. Why? 
because one, you either probably started defending yourself more or two, you turned it over to God and God changed the whole tide for the better, right? The, the, you know, so, because essentially this karmic system that we operate on, it's pretty much, you know, you are, we are the mirrors in which we look, right? When I look out into the world, I'm seeing a reflection of myself. When other people look into the world, they see a reflection of themselves, right? And the reason why it's like that is because we pay attention to the things that, like say when we look into the world, when we look into the world, like I was saying about the whole mirror thing, when I look into the world, my mind is programmed to look for certain things. Based on what I look for in the world, dictates where I am in life that's just like or where I am in my own inner life and that's exactly how um it is when it comes to um what is that um those psychological tests you know where they say hey uh, okay imagine yourself being in a desert okay now you see a box next to the box is a ladder next to the ladder is a tree you know and then they break down everything that, you know, and then you, while you're envisioning all of this, they say, okay, well, if the box is this big, then this is how you feel about yourself. If the ladder is, you know, like, oh, if the ladder is, you know what I mean? And that's essentially what, what's going on here. That's essentially how it works, Cosmo, you know, how the cosmos work. Because with the karmic system, it's like, you can only see you can't see past your own expectations essentially or if your eye is trained to identify certain things that's what it's going to pick up so basically what i'm saying here is like you know when you are living your life it's certain things that you look for in yourself or there are certain things that you hold in high regard and the things that you hold in high regard are the things that your eyes tend to pick up the most so if you are a person who is superficial you're going to be looking at people's shoes and things of that nature when you first meet them and i'm not saying everybody don't do that but essentially that's what it is so basically the mirror that you're looking at the one that's reflecting back at you when you look in reality is your super superficiality you know just to keep it simple i was saying all of that just to say this when it comes to the karmic system and you know about that evil eye well let me back up one second when it comes to the karmic system and when you are put in a situation of pain or suffering or grief or whatever that has a tendency of purifying you or causing you to pay for a debt pay a cosmic debt that you owe whether it's in this life or another life or whatever, right? Once that is done and you are debt free, things change. And that's exactly what happened. Whoever this person is, if you are dealing with something similar to what I dealt with, um, or if this is just you, you know, you could, you know, whatever. This is some. The, the, the karma that was accrued from this situation supersedes what you were supposed to receive. Okay? And this person could have been trying to block you, hold you up, keep the blessings from coming, try to steal it from you, try to keep you paranoid, try to keep you acting from a place of fear. And maybe that's exactly what this is. Having you acting from a place of fear, lower vibrational emotion. Somebody wants you to act from a place of fear, anger, hatred, mainly fear. And that right there, acting out of fear is what's going to cost you your um, independent status. At least that's what they, they're hoping to do to you. Okay. Let's see what else we got out here. We got the King of Cups in reverse here. Yes. So essentially they're trying to, whoever this is, this could be your energy or this could be someone else, 
But essentially what they're trying, what someone wants to do is close off your heart. They want to strip you of your mastery, your emotional mastery. They want to turn your emotional mastery into a liability. You know what I'm saying? And basically that's that narcissistic energy here. So yeah, it's this definitely give me the vibe of a narcissist with that King of Cups here. That's somebody who wants their way no matter what. And one thing that I found about narcissists is even if they do get their way, it's never good enough. So once a narcissist is unsatisfied with something, they'll they'll continue to be unsatisfied with it. Someone I know is definitely a narcissist and they think that the way that they the way that they envision things going is the best way for things to go. So let's say if this person envisioned you going to McDonald's a certain route instead of Burger King, they will pers they will continuously insist that you take this route. You see what I'm saying? This person continuously insists that you think like they do. That you feel like they feel. So essentially what happens is it's kind of like if, you know, um, it's kind of like if at first this person wanted you to, um, let's say, walk on the, go, go to the beach. And you're like, I don't want to, like, you know, and they convince you to go to the beach. You go to the beach. Then you're like, all right, I'll go, but I don't, I can't get in the water. So then they're like, okay, well, let's go for a walk on the beach. And he's like, no, because I don't want to get my, you know, I can't get in the water. And then they're like, oh, it's just your feet, right? And then after that, it's like, yo, let's go wading in it. Oh, I can't do that. It's just your legs. You see what I'm saying? And essentially, it keeps going and going and going until you're in the water and you're overwhelmed because you can't swim. This narcissist person here is so hell-bent on power and control that there's no limit to the power and control that they want. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it comes to a narcissist and power, they get greedy. They will, no matter what you go through or what you endure, it's never good enough. It's never, it's never good enough. You know why it's never good enough? Because in their inner child, when they, in their inner child, they were never good enough. So, you know what they do? They go around and they look into the other people and identify qualities about them that isn't good enough. Y'all going to share that. Next here, we got the uh, moon car here. So yeah, the whole tactic here that this person has is probably like some blackmail shit. That's why it's best to just quit giving a fuck. If they try to, if this person try to blackmail you or try to um, put you on blast or whatever it may be, it requires that your emotions get involved in order for it to work. Because this person could be trying to expose your secrets or try to say things about you, create secrets. It doesn't matter. Only thing that matter when I was in spiritual warfare, only thing that mattered to me is that look, you not finna come say that shit to my face because you know I'll beat your ass. You know you got a back of the head punch coming. Flat out, right? It's the same concept here. <clears throat> a narcissist's best ally is the shadows. When a narcissist is exposed to the light, it's it's detrimental to their health because that means that they can't do they can't put people against one another like they want to in order to secure maintain or enforce their power they can't enforce you know their authority on others that's one thing that a narcissist hate is a certain attention it's certain attention that the, the narcissist just, just detest or hate. And it's always that energy or that... Um, it's always the attention of the truth coming out. It's always when people can see past 
the narcissistic shit that they do. If you wanna, if you wanna piss a narcissist off or someone you think is a narcissist off, call they ass out on some shit they do. And then after that, you know, that criticism. Not every narcissist can handle that criticism. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We got the high priestess in reverse here. So yeah, with the uh, emotion card here, this is giving me the vibe of uh, not being balanced here. This isn't balanced. This is the energy of unbalanced uh, emotions. Somebody emotions. This could be somebody who's bipolar. This definitely giving me the vibe of a bipolar energy because you have the uh, the three columns here. Uh, three pillars here the pillar of uh, mercy and the pillar which is white and the pillar of uh, I guess power or something like that I can't remember what it was and then there we are in the center we are the center uh, pillar because we go from one pillar to the next to you know accommodate what we need most in life so somebody emotions is all out of whack not only is it out of whack, but they can't. It's like it's that bipolar energy. It's definitely bipolar energy that's out here. Then we have the judgment card out here. So in reality, what's really going on is these people are getting reaping the karma of the things that they've sent out. So yeah, all that all that time that us readers kept saying it's going to come back it's going to come back backfire reversal whatever it's happening now i just want to let you know you got the emperor card in reverse the three of swords out here and the tower card here yeah this uh narcissist has been dealt a massive blow something that they can't recover from whoever this tyrant is and I said that I was going to read the uh, cards, right? Judgment has to do... I want to say judgment has to do with Saturn. I want to say that's like that Libra-Saturn energy here, right? Because depending on what you do, that depends on where you go and what you deal with. So I'm going to say that's like that Libra-Saturn energy here. And then I have the High Priestess in reverse and the Moon card out here. So that gives me the vibe of Pisces, a Pisces Moon. Somebody could have a Pisces Moon or a Pisces and Saturn Moon. You know, a, 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 moon and, a Moon and Saturn and Pisces is the vibe, you know. And that has to do with like um, someone who's stuck in their head. Like somebody could be like really stuck in there. Like they they think a lot. They think more than what they do. That's where that bipolar energy is coming from here. And so because of that, you know, in order to get their way with certain people, you know what I'm saying? They compensate by, you know, using secrets and stuff like that. Blackmail, extortion, whatever you want to call it. All right, that's all I got. Uh, definitely uh, check me out again in the next video. Um, I love y'all all. Y'all take it easy and uh, be safe. I know this video was short, but it's for a reason. Um, catch up with you guys later. All right, peace.